Hey everybody, I'm Jim Fisher and I thought for a change I'd start a video by getting in front of the camera. Uh, I'm really grateful for all the folks who have subscribed to my video series on my portable solar power generator over the last six years. Uh, over the period of time between 2015 and the present, I've been just amazed at how much ongoing interest there is in solar power and more specifically in the system that I developed. I'm going to share with you today that I've got big plans for something that many of you have been asking for. You often asked, why haven't you put lithium batteries into that system? And as I mentioned early on, uh, cost was a tremendous factor. Back in 2015, lithium batteries were quite expensive, but those prices have come way down, and I'm really excited to share with you the plans that I have for this spring as we round out uh, the end of this winter season to make a major upgrade to my portable solar power generator. And I'm gonna share a lot about that with you today. But again, thanks so much for your continued interest. Thank you to all my subscribers. I think you'll uh, really appreciate what I've got coming next. And hopefully if you've modeled your system after mine and you started with AGM or other lead acid batteries, you'll be uh, better equipped from my videos and all the others who are doing work in this area to improve your own DIY system. So thanks again. And here's some great news on the upgrade. So perhaps a bit of history is in order before I start to describe this new major upgrade that I have in the plans. About five years ago in 2015, as I was searching around on YouTube to explore some early interest in solar systems, uh, I had the mindset of building a small system to serve my needs on this small boat. It was a 24 foot uh, Larson Cabrio and uh, we would have enjoyed having some refrigeration aboard and being able to charge electronics. So I started looking at YouTube, as many of you have, and uh, built and designed and built this first solar generator system. Uh, but there were certainly limitations. It served us well. And as uh, our interests in boating have grown, so have grown the interest in improving our solar power generator system. So the first system, as you all know, was uh, quite compact. I really liked the design. It fit well inside of my cuddy. Uh, it's very portable to the effect that it's not attached to anything in the boat. Uh, it offered a 400 watt inverter, which I agree uh, offered some limitations. And that's part of the plans here too. We're going to be upgrading to a much larger 2000 watt external inverter. And that inverter was served by two 55 amp hour AGM batteries. So really only 55 amp hours were available for use. As you all know, you cannot push AGM batteries to a depth of discharge much below 50% before you start to permanently damage those batteries. But nonetheless, uh, I like this portable setup and uh, it served us very well during the time we used it on that first boat. As far as solar panels went, uh, I started with a single 100 watt flexible panel on the top of the bimini of this first boat and it worked. Uh, it wasn't the greatest setup as far as long term stability on top of the bimini. Uh, over the years, I explored many options, including using rare earth magnets that each pulled about 50 pounds of force. And that really worked well to keep those panels settled on top. Many of you likely found out if you experimented with these flexible or semi-flexible panels early on was that they didn't last very long. They started to delaminate and I attribute some of that to the fact that they didn't lay perfectly flat on top of the bimini. And uh, I'm going to show you a little bit about what we did on our next boat to resolve that problem. This is our newest boat. It's a 2001 main ship pilot uh, 34. Uh, we plan on doing some long-term cruising on this boat and of course uh, being self-sufficient as far as energy is concerned was one of the goals. So we have moved that portable solar generator on board this boat. We continue to use it, uh, but we have made some substantial upgrades on the whole to the boat's uh, power producing capacity. So as you can see on top of this uh, boat, we have placed a stainless steel support frame. It uh, is attached to the bimini framing. I want to thank my uncle who helped make that possible. Uh, but the stainless steel, very rigid, very strong, does a great job of supporting the two 175 watt 
solar panels you see mounted there. There's 350 watts in total, and as you can also see, there is room to add a third, which will be in the plans in the future. So we'll have 525 total watts of, of uh, power coming from those three panels in the future. Uh, to make sure that they laid nice and flat, stayed flat, were well supported, and these again are uh, semi-flexible panels that I used, we did put underneath them a, a coroplast sheet. It's kind of a corrugated plastic sheet, and that in fact is supported also by angle brackets made from aluminum along the lengths of each panel. So uh, they are not what I would call rigid panels in the traditional sense, but they are um, very well supported flexible panels and that helped to keep the weight down on top of the bimini framing that was important as well what we did with this uh, was separate the panels into two systems there are two completely independent solar power generation systems on this boat now we have the portable solar generator which you all know of, and it is being served by one of those 175 watt panels. The other 175 watt panel goes into its own solar charge controller, which serves to charge a 190 amp hour 4D battery that is both the starting battery and the house battery for this boat. That 4D battery is in the engine compartment. And of course, I said it, uh, it starts the boat, but it also serves to power the freshwater pump it serves the vacuum head toilet flush system and of course all of the lighting on the boat is derived from that 4d batteries power so we have two separate systems for redundancy uh, and this new enhancement will greatly increase the number of amp hours that are available for other uh, types of consumption that we have in mind while we're living on this boat and traveling long haul One of the major concerns on the boat was how we're going to prepare food. And as you're looking out over uh, the aft cockpit, you'll notice a small magma gas grill. And we found that to be very useful. We carry two six pound aluminum tanks of propane in a uh, appropriate locker aboard the boat. And uh, most of our meals are, are cooked outdoors on that grill. Of course, there is a two burner electric stove in the galley, and when we are at the dock, there's no problem using that. But as you can imagine, using that when you are on the hook or at anchor is not practical. That two burner electric stove would draw a tremendous current, and that would not likely be supported without uh, running a generator, which we do not want to do. We want to try to be uh, as green as possible and, and satisfy our needs using our solar power systems. So one of the things I looked into was adding an induction cooktop, just a portable one. And I found an induction cooktop that draws 1,800 watts tops. And quickly realized that in order to serve that, obviously you'd need a larger inverter. And I've always carried an, a, a 2,000 watt modified sine wave inverter aboard for using tools, but uh, I have recently upgraded to a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter, and it will power this new induction cooktop. But of course, you need a larger battery bank. In fact, the uh, specific inverter I chose won't even operate unless it detects that there's a minimum of 170 amp hours available in your battery bank which of course in the portable solar generator in its current configuration uh, is, is not possible. There's only 55 amp hours there available and 110 amp hours total. So the, uh, the inverter won't even turn on. So that became the impetus for this major upgrade to the lithium iron phosphate batteries to get a lot more amp hours available to serve a much larger uh, pure sine wave inverter that could uh, at the top end of our needs serve to uh, allow us to cook if need be during, for example, a rainstorm when you have to be indoors and you are on the hook so that induction cooktop can function with the new system as we're designing it. Of course, a significant challenge remained and that was to fit inside the existing space of my initial design a much larger battery or one at least that had 
far more amp hours than were currently available. You can see on the left and right those two 55 amp hour AGM batteries. And there was a fair amount of space left in the middle that I've mentioned, I think, in response to some of the comments that people have made over the years that you could put a third 55 amp hour battery in there. Well, uh, with the price of lithium uh, batteries coming down, I started looking into the possibility of upgrading and putting a lithium battery in this space. So one of the first concerns was, was okay, what can I fit in there? I did a lot of research and it found that any of the ready-made, what I'll call drop-in lithium batteries that were available by a number of suppliers were simply too big to fit in this space. And, and frustrating, uh, I found that Sometimes they were only too large by an inch or so to fit inside of my existing case. And I didn't want to start over again. Uh, I think I have a very good system. Its layout has been wonderful. The power distribution op options have served us very well. So again, the goal is to put a lithium battery in this space. Search high and low, couldn't find anything that would fit. However, what I did come across was uh, some reasonably priced 3.2 volt cells, which uh, when combined, putting four of them together, you can create your own 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. So that is the direction I'm heading with this major upgrade. We're going to put four 3.2 volt cells together, create a new 280 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, fit it into this space, and allow ourselves quite a bit more power to run that induction cooktop and any other needs that are served by the 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. So I think most people have come to know me, I'm kind of a planner. So uh, I spent much of the winter uh, up to this point doing my research, watching lots of videos, looking at products that were, that were available. And what I came across was um, a supplier in China that provided LifePo4 prismatic battery cells, four of them shipped, including tax and duty fees, for $461. I took careful measurements of my existing batteries, compared them against the measurements that were described by this vendor, and found that they will fit inside the case. Um, what is really amazing is that when you take a look at the amp hours that are available, I'm going to anticipate 224 amp hours. That's 80% coming from the new battery pack, costing $2.06 per amp hour versus the 55 that are currently available via the AGM batteries, costing $4.55 per amp hour. So again, the, the lithium uh, technology has improved. The cost has come way down, and now the time is right to take advantage of that. I'm uh, anticipating about four times more amp hours available for half the cost, so it's hard to argue with um, the, the value of moving toward lithium. To get more specific, uh, again, comparison side by side, 55 amp hours are available from the current AGM batteries if you take them down to no more than a 50% state of discharge versus 224 amp hours uh, usable, and that's at an 80% depth of discharge. I, I tend to uh, treat my systems well. I'm not going to push my lithium batteries to the point where they are completely exhausted or anywhere near it. Uh, the cost, in 2015, I paid $250 for the pair of 55 amp hour AGM batteries. Uh, again, I mentioned that the cost for these new batteries, the new cells to build this pack is $460, including the shipping. Weight is a tremendous factor too. My wife will tell you that she doesn't uh, look forward to moving that system on and off the boat seasonally. The system as it stands right now is close to 100 pounds. And that's due to 77 pounds worth of AGM batteries. The uh, new LifePo 4 batteries will be about half that weight, 40 pounds. And the longevity of the batteries is another factor to consider. Uh, we anticipate that the AGM batteries would serve us well for five years worth of use. I think we're in our sixth, maybe seventh year of uh, using them seasonal use, and they're still going strong. But the new LifePo 4 batteries are expected to far exceed that uh, by a factor of two. And we're expecting upwards of 10 plus years of cyclical use of, uh, of these new batteries. So again, it's four times the amp hours available at half the cost, it's half the weight and twice the longevity. So we don't feel that uh, you could ignore uh, the benefits of moving to, to lithium at this time. 
So here's a sneak peek, but as I mentioned through the winter months, I've been very busy planning. Uh, I've worked out the wiring schematics to make sure that everything is going to be uh, connected appropriately. Uh, I mentioned early on in my video series, I do have a friend that uh, is an engineer. He and I went to UB together and I've been pestering him throughout the winter months, having him look at my uh, schematics and checking and double checking to make sure everything would be hooked up properly and that the wire gauges were appropriate. And I'm going to be sharing this uh, with everyone. This is just a peek at what the diagram looks like as far as those four 3.2 volt, 280 hour LifePo4 batteries. And you'll also notice that there is a new component that's going to have to go in that's a battery management system if you've done your homework and are looking at other videos you'll you'll know that that's required as part of the complete battery package for any lithium system uh, but this will be available to everyone i'll share this uh, in its entirety so that those of you who have built my system i know there are many of you uh, if you're looking to upgrade to lithium we'll give you the, the plans to go ahead and give that a shot for yourself again LifePo4 batteries offer an awful lot of benefits, but I will use this phrase. They require a lot of uh, babysitting, if you will, or at least a lot of initial care to uh, put them together properly, to top balance them for uh, preparing for service and then commissioning them. So I have done a tremendous amount of research. I've, I've got about six or seven pages worth of notes that I have taken that are step-by-step -step instructions for uh, assembling the battery pack for top balancing it uh, and then for preparing it for service commissioning and again I'll be sharing that with everybody as well so we've got big plans ahead uh, I'm going to be happy to share this I'm going to be even happier to put this system to use on my boat and uh, and eventually in retirement uh, put it to the test to see how well it will serve us over the long haul on a daily basis when we are not uh, tied to the dock and using shore power and drawing from this bank plus the other one to serve our daily needs. So uh, I want to thank everybody for your ongoing interest. Stay tuned. There'll be more videos uh, this year than ever. I know that some of you uh, have been with me for a long time and I appreciate your continued interest. I don't uh, put out videos like some folks do every couple of weeks. I generally put out a video when I am making an upgrade and want to share that with everyone. But uh, I'm going to put out some additional videos as I build this battery pack and uh, get it ready for service and uh, that hopefully will keep folks interested and uh, I'm really most interested in giving something back to the community of folks who are solar power enthusiasts. I've drawn a lot from YouTube and I just hope to give a little bit back because it certainly has uh, made for a lot of enjoyment for me to tinker with these kind of systems and then put them into practice in my RV. So thanks again for uh, watching. We will catch up with you all soon. Stay tuned. Hopefully my batteries will arrive from China within the next couple of weeks and I'll get to work and uh, document some of what I'm doing to uh, get this project underway.